Hey guys, so when I left you last, we were working on create listing, and when we create one when we're not logged in, we get this error right here. And if we take a look at our code, this makes a lot of sense. And what we're doing is we're just putting the session ID straight into the listing, uh, and we're not checking whether it's uh, there or not. So in that case, there is no user ID because the user is not logged in, but we still try to create a listing. Uh, so it's creating invalid SQL. Um, it's trying to do a query that is not uh, valid, so it's throwing that error. Now we want to avoid this. Uh, we do throw an error, which is good. We don't actually create a listing. But it would be nice to avoid doing this whole query right here. There's no need to run a SQL command uh, when we can know up front whether the user is logged in. So what we can do up here is we can just add a simple if statement here and say session.userID. And we can say if this does not exist, then you can say you know for sure that the user is not logged in and here you can do whatever you want so I'm going to opt to just throw an error so throw a new error and I'm going to say not authenticated so now if I were to go rerun that uh, while not logged in they're going to get a nice little error that makes sense and we're not going to try on the back end to actually run a SQL command uh, and so that'll save a little bit of performance as well all right, so the server restarted. We can come back over here. Uh, let's request again, and now we see not authenticated. Nice. So this is pretty basic authorization right here. I want to show you a, a more advanced case, and that's with deleting a listing. Before we can even delete a listing, I think it'd be helpful to add um, a query so we can actually see all the listings, so we can see what we're deleting. So I'm going to add a new folder here called find and I'm going to create a new schema and we're going to say type query and I'm going to say find listings and this is just going to return all the listings so we need to create a type called listing and we're going to return an array of those so type listing and I think we started that in the create over here so we can copy that so this is where we're going to be using that ID I was talking about. And then we can actually copy most of the fields that we have over here, as well as the oops picture URL, which is a string. All right, so that looks good to me. We can now add a resolver for it. And again, we can copy the format that we're using for our create. And I'm going to say find listings and I think I did use a s at the end uh, yeah I just want to confirm and then so in here I'm going to uh, don't need any arguments so this is a convention I don't know if I've mentioned this before but if you don't use the argument you put an underscore so this first argument we're not using so I have an underscore there uh, the second argument we don't need either so if I try to do a single underscore it'll give me an error because we already have an underscore over here so what you do is you just do two underscores um, and actually I don't even think we need a third one um, so in this case we don't even need to use underscores we can actually just do that and I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff and I'm just gonna say listing dot find and that will return all the listings uh, reason why I'm not we don't really need any authentication on this because listings are public at least uh, the way we're doing it right now everything is public and uh, we don't need to check if the user is logged in or anything so let's go ahead and see if that works so I'm going to say listing or find listings uh, it doesn't look like it's good yet let's see if it's restarted um, alright so it says oh I already see the error so I was using a mutation instead of query right there and you can see I put this under the query type so that was what's wrong uh, and then we can see hopefully this will now restart awesome we can pop back over here I'm gonna refresh so I can get auto completion find listings let's grab the ID and the name alright so I can see a couple of them right here so now we're gonna implement to delete so let's say I want to delete this listing right here now 
Ideally, how we want to do delete is you cannot delete someone else's listing, right? You can only delete your own listing. So I'm going to show you two ways you can set up authentication for that or authorization. So we're going to call this delete. We'll create a schema for it first. And oops, I'm going to say delete listing and we're going to pass an ID, which is going to be a string. And we're going to return a boolean, true or false, whether it worked. So let's create the resolvers for it, or the resolver. And again, I'm going to copy the, the boilerplate. Oh, didn't copy it correctly. All right, so this is going to be mutation, delete, listing. Um, we can console log the session if we want. This first part is useful still. So we still want to check whether the user is logged in or not. Uh, so you shouldn't even be able to delete a user if you're not logged in. So that's like the first layer of the check. Um, and here the argument is going to be an ID, um, not an input. And here I'm going to say listing.delete. And I'm going to say where and we're gonna say uh, ID here. Um, oh, you know what, it's not uh, delete, it's uh, I think remove, yeah, there we go. So where ID, uh, is it not remove either? Oh, it's remove, I think it's listing that remove by, you know, I, I forget what it even is, so I'm gonna just use my trick. Um, I'm gonna click on this guy and I'm going to click on this guy and see all the different methods that this has and see if I can figure out where remove. So I see a remove there and I see a remove here. So this remove, it requires a base entity. Um, what that means is you have to actually uh, find it first. So what that means is I have to say const listing and I say listing dot find by ID. Oh, they only have find by ID. We're gonna do find one where the ID. So here I'm finding the listing first. Uh, after I find the listing, I now have an entity, right? Or it's undefined. So if not listing, throw new error. So if we're unable to find a listing, that means they try to delete something that doesn't exist. So we can just say, does not exist. Um, it, but if it makes it to this point, we know this listing exists, so we can now delete it. A listing. All right, cool. And so now, so when I said it took an entity, this thingy is an entity right here. So we can say listing now remove and pass that in here. Now, we still haven't added the authorization to this yet. I believe this should delete the item, but uh, anyone can call this, uh, at least if they're logged in. So we wanna prevent that from happening, and we only want people that are the owner of it to be able to do that. So what we're gonna do is, after we know we got a listing, um, if we say listing.userID, we can see who owns um, this item. So I can say if session.userID um, does not equal the user ID on the listing. So we're basically checking against the person who's logged in versus the person who owns the listing. And if they're not equal, we can throw an error and we can say not authorized. Uh, you may consider like adding a log message or something. Um, Maybe you want to know uh, users that are trying to, like this is malicious behavior, right? Trying to delete someone else's stuff. So you might want to log that. So maybe I add a console log for using something else for logging. And I'm like, all right, uh, this user, and we can just do a string template. And uh, we'll say session.userID is trying to delete a listing they don't own. So in that case, uh, 
you can maybe you want to keep track of this and if a user is doing this a lot of times doing this across different things consider banning them or whatnot because they're trying to basically get around the system or whatnot who knows but this is like a good thing to keep track of all right so that's that um, let's go ahead and test this out now so uh, I'm currently not logged in and uh, let's make sure the server restarted okay it did so I'm not logged in so if I were to try to delete something um, we'll refresh first it should not even let me um, get to a point so delete listing ID and uh, I can just give this a bad ID too so I get not authenticated because I'm not logged in so now I'm gonna log in with my uh, the correct user so this guy owns the listing um, I logged in okay I can see my cookie here I'm gonna copy the ID over here um, before I paste that in I want to see if I get the error where we can't find the item um, here it says invalid syntax for a UUID uh, I wonder if this is this is not a bad error actually I don't think this is a bad error to show to the user um, maybe we want to uh, change it a little bit but I think that's fine I'm just gonna change the last letter um, cool so now we get does not exist so this is an ID that doesn't exist and if I try to delete the real thing it's able to delete okay so now I want to try deleting this other listing over here so this one over here logged in as a different account and I don't know uh, another user off the top of my head that I have that's confirmed uh, I'm not sure if I have that I ever confirmed this account um, I don't so I'm gonna create a new user real quick I'm gonna say mutation register um, and I have C let's do D at D.com password D at D.com and here I want to see message and path if I get any errors while doing this oh is this accounts already taken I wonder if I'm uh, confirmed with that Um, invalid. Oh, I just used a different email for it. All right, we'll go to the next letter. Okay, looks like it registered. Let's open up in Ethereal. Confirm it. It tried taking me to the login page, but uh, I don't have it running right now. I'm going to change this to login. And I'm going to say errors. And I'm just going to clear my my cookie right here so I can tell whether another cookie was added. And it was awesome. So now let's try to delete this listing over here. So I am logged in and I've passed a valid ID that this ID exists. And now we get this new error called not authorized, which is perfect because I'm trying to delete something which I'm not the owner of. So nice. So this is how you can do authorization in GraphQL. All right. So basically, we just add some if statements to our resolver, right? And that's pretty much all you need. You don't have to get too fancy with this. Um, you can just add checks like this. Now, what I want to go over in the next video is uh, we're kind of duplicating logic. So right here, I'm checking whether the user is authenticated, and in my create, I'm checking whether the user is authenticated. And maybe I want to use this across other resolvers as well. What happens if I want to, uh, you know, make this check different or change this error message? Uh, I now have to change it in multiple places. So we're going to go over how you can kind of uh, add some middleware in front of your resolvers um, to uh, get rid of this boilerplate. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.